So I'm giving you a analysis of my numbers February, and then here are my numbers from January 1st all the way to March 2nd. So I've brought in, this is just looking at one bank account where I have majority of my go to. There's very few other places where I have income go to, but that those numbers are almost irrelevant. Talking maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars or so, nothing too crazy. So this is just me analyzing one business account where I have majority of my income go to. So from January to March 22, had uh, $70,027. And when I look at expense, numbers, money going out, we had $69,034.20 go out. Now, to not scare you, of that 69 grand, a good 20 plus thousand or so is actual cash flow. Now that cash flow is what's being used to pay down, right, which is now at $380,000. We started at $566,000 December 21st, 2023. Went ahead and bought a primary residence. I have now a home. And instead of your traditional mortgage, I have what's called a first position home equity line of credit where the credit limit starts out based on the financing amount, which was $566,000. I have an intro rate of 4.99% for six months. So that expires in June this year. And I have the ability to drive a majority of my income to this line of credit. I'm able to spend all, I'm able to run all my expenses out of the line of credit, hence this is helping me re dramatically reduce the amount of interest that I'll pay on the life of this particular debt. My goal is to have this paid off by December of 2026. So we're looking at about a three year time starting from December 2023 all the way to December 2026. If I get done sooner, great. If it takes a little bit longer, no big deal because my particular world, by the time I get to 2026, there might be, you know, under 50,000 owed, but understand the value of the property would have increased. I have a credit line of 566,000 to use however be necessary, right? So from December, 2021 to now March 24, on the 22nd, a lot of twos, I now owe $380,477.33. There's over 180,000 of available credit however I want. Four major numbers for February, 32 came in, 35 came out. So for that month, tech was a negative, right? But again, of this 35, there's roughly 10,000 plus of like net cash flow that occurred. But because I'm stripping it out of the business account, it looks like a negative business, right? Again, total numbers, Here's how much is coming out of the business. And again, it's being sent in personal, first lien home equity line of credit, just so we have that understanding. But I'm still showing like what's going on uh, from account to account, right? So that we don't get lost. We've got some upcoming expenses, okay? I have a tax bill for $46,059 that is due on April 15th. This covers all my taxes for 2023 and the first estimated payment for 2024. So that's why that number looks a little bit large. In the first video of this series is titled First Lean HELOC Cost and Strategy Breakdown, right? So I'm gonna create a little playlist where I start documenting and putting all these videos together so you can watch them in order. From numbers to numbers, what switches, what happens, what gets better, what gets worse, that sort of thing. In that video, I did not account for taxes. So these numbers are gonna look a little bit worse than what I initially projected, but not too bad overall, despite many other things occurring that we're gonna talk about. So that's the first thing is the tax bill, April. Also, I have one policy that I'll be max funding on April 14th for 17,853.21. Of this amount is also a loan interest included in there that I'll be paying. So again, this money is gonna be coming out of the line of credit, all my income, comes from business, there's business expenses, cash flow and income that I pay myself from the business is being driven into this first lien HELOC. The same is being said for my mom, my fiance. So we have three incomes that we're using in my household to accelerate a balance owed on this first lock. This is where we're actually parking our savings dollars. We're parking our investment dollars. We're parking cash flow dollars. We're parking as much money as we can in the first lien HELOC and simultaneously that gives us instant equity. Immediately able to use that money again, twice, right? To go and do another thing. The next thing coming up in June is another policy that I'm funding. So that amount is 84,551.19. That's max funding the policy plus paying loan. In. What I did to initially acquire the property, 
because in my first video I mentioned that the purchase price was six hundred and thirty thousand dollars right plus closing costs I borrowed from my policies right specifically this one to fund the down payment which was 10.1 percent and then there's closing costs on top of that so that's what was used I borrowed from saving had nearly 400 almost 500 thousand in savings across different accounts so majority of it from this policy right here and i boom borrowed boom acquired the home now have the debt now paying down the debt extremely fast paying as little interest as humanly possible balance this money right or i should say this right this six hundred and thirty thousand purchase price on a property real estate this money has to get spent uh this this is now in my economy i already know this this money is going to leave my economy to go to the bank but before that happens utilizing my own banking system to fund that right the down payment and then the acceleration then over time with my income my my production my activity income cash flow goes into the line of credit then simultaneously while it's paying it down i'm then drawing out of that line of credit to continue to fund my own bank my own bank right and then money gets borrowed out again pay down that line money comes out again to fund my own bank and what's going to happen is this 566 eventually is all going to be in the policy so this will get paid off in roughly three years and then that whole debt will be sitting in the policy right and then i'll spend the next couple of years driving my income and cash flow to my own bank meanwhile i'll have a 560 plus thousand dollar credit line that i can leverage to say go acquire more real estate invest in my business to produce more income more cash flow increase the velocity of money the speed at which money moves in the direction that it moves in right so i've got to explain that to you in detail so june boom then we have another estimated tax payment of ten thousand dollars those are the upcoming expenses that we know of now something that i realized being a homeowner is there are unexpected expenses that are going to pop up now in my mind i low-key accounted for it the number was more than i thought so i had about seven to ten thousand dollars of unexpected expenses right and I kind of named some of the things here, home insulation, AC work. I got cited from the city, say, hey, you know, you got to plant some shrubs and mulch and you got to put a tree here. And I'm like, dude, I just moved in. Right. So I'm like, all right, got to do some roof work, some pressure washing, a couple different stuff going on. So I was like, OK, these are interesting feelings that I'm feeling and I uh, don't know if I like it. So there's a lot of confusion on the Internet, right? There's a whole community that exists that will tell you never use debt, avoid debt like the plague. There's another big community that says, leverage debt use debt to create wealth use debt to accelerate wealth to create more cash flow and income to reduce on taxes to have more protection overall and in this community in the finance geek community we pull from both worlds to see what works best for us so that's kind of been my personal strategy starting this youtube video all the way up now 2024 as i pull from both worlds now from this world avoiding debt as much as possible